Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And today we have a very new game. It is brand new. It's exclusive world premiere of a Atari 2600 game, Load Runner by Dion Olstorn, aka Dionoid. And we do have an interview with him as well to talk all about the game. So I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited to play. I think I bought this shirt two years ago. Oh, nice. When uh, two or three years ago, when I heard that Dion was adapting Load Runner. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll buy the shirt. I know it's going to be awesome because <laughs> Dion's making it. So I finally get to wear it. It's been hanging in my closet for, for almost three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I'm able to mm. wear it today for the world premiere of his game. Always lo been looking forward to this for a very long time. Um, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers first. Uh, Eldefer, Arena Foot, Arkham H, Arms God, Crowder, Atari 800, XL Rules, Atari 1974, Atari Age, Atari Patch Quest, BR Pocock, Buck Owens, Cafe Man 2D, Carlos Madruga, Charles Donnie Mao, Charles and Jack, Charles Whelan, Chick, Sheet Gamer, Colonel Lama, Cubanismo, Dianoid, Dan, if you see Drexel, Duck, Moo, Cows, Emmy Dan, Gray, Go for Defender, Go for Defender, Go for Man, and Gray Defender. <laughs> they are two separate people. Uh, Ground True Tro Trooper, Johnny WC Computer, JRM, Carl G, Ken Jennings, and Beta Lambda Express, Lauren TDZ, Mark Johannes, Mark Space, saying, Make Me Use Mike Soul, Mike Littell, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Zona Whoop, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Nostalgic Pack, Rock, Coag, R, Entro, it's RC70, Rendered Ghost, Pantless VD, Cucajardo, Pimps, Rodcaster, Six Weeks, Smitty B, Spicer, D Train, Welshman, T Thrust, Tiki Dan, K, Tifos, TM, Events, Track MD, 2600, X, Ken X, and also. Spiceware and Packrat VG for just signing up right now. And if you want to do that too and support the show, just hit subscribe. It's free with Amazon Prime. They have a little checkbox or something that you can link it up and mm -hmm. it's free and you support the show. And uh, I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a piece of mail. I think I know what it is. Here it is. I think, I think it's the programmer for the Dragonfly cart. The programmer. The the box that I need to interface with the Dragonfly cart to upgrade. Upgrade it. it. Oh, okay. okay. Um, although there's going to be a Dragonfly. I heard. Um, what a flashing party, <laughs> as it was termed. Uh, that uh, at, I'm just going to probably do that instead at, now that it's like a yeah. week away. At, at Portland. Almost. Yeah, yeah at Portland. Portland. At Portland Retro Gaming yeah. Expo. So if you have your it Dragonfly. Is. If you have your Dragonfly. You can bring it and get it upgraded. That's right. So yeah. definitely check out the Atari Age forum link for that. I don't have it handy. Um, yeah, it is the programmer. Um, yeah, it's... Let me, let me open it up so you guys can see what it is. Mm. Uh, this is so you can connect to the Dragonfly and upgrade it directly. Uh... Aubrey Tower Collection says, "Don't forget to bring your Intelli." <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, that Gotta is on my list. bring that along to too. Bring. It's a USB blaster. Doesn't that sound Ooh. like something from the '90s? Yeah. It's a USB blaster. Like a blast. gigantic gun that you point at it, and it just Come on. Come on. shoots the upgrade into the dragon. Can you move fly. the cat? I, I know fault. he's being very silly right now. <laughs> Like this USB blaster doubles the speed of your USB. Yeah. <laughs> doubles your RAM. You just have to install it. Any free USB port. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it does. Oh, there we go. Um, we're also going to be giving away at Portland Retro Gaming Expo a ZPH cart. Nice. The last one that we have to give away. <laughs> I don't know exactly <laughs> yet yep. how or why or when we're going to give it away but I'll probably post it in the forums in the thread for this game. We'll have to think up some sort of thing some that people have to come up to us and or, tell us something or um, I don't know. Some quiz. Force everyone to go on a scavenger hunt and find something. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll figure something out. We don't want to make them work too hard. Oh, well, That's well yeah, sure. we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so, oh, yeah, you guys don't want to see that anymore. So let's just take a quick, quick look before we bring Dion on mm -hmm. of the original Load Runner. So you see, get a glimpse of what it came from, from the Apple II, where I, was the, the first release. Before on. you start this, yeah. I'm just going to say I have a bit of a cold. If I suddenly dart from the room, it's probably because I'm trying not to cough directly into the <laughs> microphone. So. You're going to run out of the room, cough and come back in? <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is... Uh, I can have it really low. This video is very loud, but let's see. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, so here is the um, Apple II version of the game. 
Uh, uh, Load Runner is a 2D puzzle platform game developed by Douglas E. Smith and published by Broderbund in 1983. The player controls a character who must collect all the gold pieces in a level and get to the end while being chased by a number of enemies. It is the one of the first games to include a level editor. And the platforms it was on, uh, the Apple II, Atari 8-bit, which there it is, the Atari 8-bit mm -hmm. version of Load Runner. Uh, Commodore 64, VIC-20, IBM PC, Arcade, PC-8801, SG-1000, and yes, Pravitz 828M, never heard of that one, ZX Spectrum, MSX, Atari ST, PC Engine, Xbox 360, Windows, iPod, Macintosh, PlayStation 3, BBC Micro, PlayStation, SNES, Amstrad, CPC, Game Boy, and now the Atari 2600, thanks to Dion. So... I want to bring Dion in now. Uh, he is the author of the classic Amoeba Jump, also the amazing Tower of Rubble, and now Load Runner. Um, let me just pause this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's bring him on. Welcome, Dion, to the show once again. Hopefully we can hear you. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Tanya. Hey. hey. Hello. Hey, Dion. Um, and welcome. Uh, it, let's just say something again. Yeah, just just test test testing out. Yeah, I looks good to me. I'll just screen, crank yeah. up a little bit. Excellent. Yeah, a little bit of a lag yeah. between uh, when you talk and when it goes to Twitch and all that stuff. Good sound, Dan says. Yay! <laughs> Always a good sign. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, congratulations on the upcoming release. Uh, this is going to be out at Portland Retro Gaming mm -hmm. Expo for sale. Is that correct? And yeah. demoing? Yeah, yeah. So there will be uh, a demo of the game, the full game, um, and it will be for sale. So, um, And I'm actually That's exciting. going to the, the Portland uh, uh, Retro Gaming Expo. So. Oh, yay! Excellent. Yeah. We're very looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, <coughs> let's um, <laughs> let's do a tiny, tiny bit of history about um, your love and fascination for this game before we look at it. That's we'll just get a preamble for that. Right, right. So, so you said um, when you posted for the first time about this game in the Atari Age forums, November eighth, two thousand nineteen. Almost three years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, the the yeah. working, yeah, quite time flies for sure. Uh, when we're all locked inside, <laughs> yeah. The working title is Fool's Gold, and it's a port of one of my favorite games on the Commodore sixty four. So, tell us about playing Load Runner on the C sixty four and your initial fascination for the game. What right. what drew you into the game? Yeah. So so. Um... I, I grew up having a, a Commodore 64. I never actually had an, an Atari 2600 when I was young. I only had the, the Commodore 64 with a lot of games. And, and one of the games I, I loved the most was Load Runner. Um, and it, it was one of the, the early games on the, the Commodore 64. I think it was released in 1983. So it was like one of the, the early uh, Commodore games. Um, Am I right? 83 or 80? That would be really early. Yeah, it was one of the early games. Um, and what I liked about the game then was the, the animation, which just instantly uh, uh, got me hooked to the game. Like the, the little stick man walking through all the levels, it's, uh, it's, it really amazed me, basically. Um, and it was one of my favorite games back then. Um, actually, yeah. together with, with uh, Boulder Dash. Also one of those, mm. I would say, um, right. yeah, uh, a golden olden uh, computer games back then. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and Load Runner was one for sure. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, I played the game when I was young. Um, and uh, uh, years later, I de decided to create games for the uh, Atari 2600. Like, uh, I think that was in 2016, I joined Atari Age. Um, and, and started to, to learn to program the Atari. And I, I remember uh, looking, some, looking up some, some uh, classic names like Boulder Dash. Is there a Boulder Dash for the Commodore 20, right. oh, for the Atari? And I found out, yes, there is one. 
but it was too late because all the copies were sold. It was like, ah, my favorite game on my my new favorite console. It's it's not available anymore. So it, it's good to hear that that game is back also. And and one yeah, of the things this, I was releasing at the same time. Exactly. I, I, I saw some people posting. It's like, oh my god. Uh, Boulder Dash and Load Runner both being sold at the same time. It's like they're in heaven. Right. Like that I think it, you your love for that translates to a lot of people's love because there's some similarities between them. You're running around, you're collecting the items in kind of a, a flat 2D space right. and, and exactly. then going for the exit. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people like both games probably. It, it's like an, a, a puzzle action game kind of, uh, mm -hmm. which, yeah, which I exactly. really like. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the enemies have yeah. certain patterns. I mean, we'll get into enemy movement um, yeah, soon enough. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there's there's it's it's puzzle and action, and I mean with with load runner, it's also um, right. uh, platforms as well, and and navigating your way. But you navigate through Boulder Dash as well. You have to yeah. watch out for things. Ex and, exactly, you know. kind of the same. Um, so, so basically, I, I looked up Atari H, just searching for, is there a version of Load Runner for the Atari 2600? Of course, the answer was a, a kind, kind of no. Some people tried it. I know there was one version that I found. It, it's yeah. called Leprechaun. Um, Leprechaun? Yeah, I, I and think it's, it's not it's, bad. Yeah, it's, it's, not bad. it's actually a, a quite playable version. Um, I didn't like yeah. the graphics too much because they kind of squeezed it in, but that was a, probably a design decision. Um, yeah, and then basically I made my plan. By then I, I finished my second game, the the Tower of Rubble, and I was yeah. um, just playing around with the idea of what could I program Load Runner for the Atari 2600. And I, it actually Excellent. took me weeks to figure out uh, to do that in uh, just just 128 bytes of of <laughs> RAM of the 2600. Oh, yeah. That that didn't fly. And then I I looked at moving to uh, uh, 265 bytes because adding you could add some like 128 bytes again by using the tsar that's right uh, that's right I, I just couldn't figure it out how to do it it's it's i at least i needed like almost one half k of ram to to be able to, to program <laughs> this game so it's it, it wasn't going of, to happen a lot going on a lot yeah. going on on the screen, a lot to keep track of, the enemies, uh, right. where the gold is, uh, what has been dug and what has not been dug, uh, exactly. timing for filling things back in, because yeah. you can dig many, many, many holes in the game and mm -hmm. it has to keep track of all of that yeah. and all the timings for that. So it's, it's a lot to squeeze in in 128 bytes. Yeah, and, that, and that's, that's not sure. going to fit. Um, yeah. And that, that so was let's, around... let's pause there. Right. Let's, let's pause there. Yeah. And 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 let's let's show the game on the screen, and then we'll get into more of the timeline yeah. of of how you how it came to be that you could actually make the game. Right. So let's uh, take a look at uh, Load Runner uh, for the first time here. Let me just switch everything over so we're ready to go. And here we go. That's right, exclusive world premiere of Load Runner for the 2600, courtesy of Dion, mm -hmm. Tozai, and Atari Age. It is a triple, yep, go for it. And the Tozai. Here part. we are. Yeah. yeah, and yep. here's the title screen for Load Runner. Beautiful animation on here. Um, so let's just uh, quickly go through the options here so people aren't uh, asking questions about them. There's the uh, level option, and on the full game, that'll go from 1 to 150. Uh, it'll at least display them. They'll be locked. Yeah. But we'll get into how that works a little bit later, it, it, uh, how it to access things. It is locking. So yeah, it shows that it's locked because you haven't locked. been there yet. Exactly, yeah. Um, there's also a speed setting. Um, slowing it down would be easier because you have more reaction time, mm. but speeding it up for experts, I'm guessing, so that uh, people are bored slowly traversing the screen and speedrunners, I guess, as well. Mm. Um, there's two themes. 
Um, maybe we can talk briefly about the themes while we're on here, Dion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, basically, the two themes are the two themes of the the, the most famous versions of Load Runner, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the version I was used to was the Commodore 64 version, which has like the the brown play field and um, it it has like the uh, I think that the the bluish. Uh, robots or the bluish guards you have to, which are chasing you around, which you can see right. at the moment. The, yep. This was basically the version I knew. Um, mm -hmm. Back back then, I didn't know about the the uh, any other uh, any other version like the Atari version or the the Apple II version. Right. I guess. Yeah. This so is and the, it's it's a simple simple thing to uh, to do to change just a couple colors and why not add that in, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the cool thing about the theme is it it also adds the the sound effects. So when you choose oh. uh, theme one, it's the sound effects of the Apple II, and if you to choose theme two, it's the sound effects of the uh, uh, Commodore 64. Oh, very very nice. Yeah. And, and this has a pass key to jump to certain levels, and we'll get into why and uh, why you change that for this version from right. other versions that people might be used to. Yeah. Um, but uh, go ahead and start playing, and we'll uh, we'll get into more of the history of cool. this the game being uh, put together. Let me just adjust the volumes here so we don't get feedback. Okay, um, there's a reference in your Load Runner write-up about uh, a Zyklon Bane post from 2003 which uh, breaks down how the game could be mapped out on a 2640 uh, pixel wide play field yeah. uh, resolution. Is that kind of an early thing that got you thinking about how it could be done or is it the John Shampoo PRGE discussion that came first? Um, I, I think the post by Xylem Bain was the first one I, I read because he was actually looking at the game and uh, making some some well, rough calculation saying you need at least this many bytes of RAM. And um, yeah. he, he, he got like a cool way of displaying data, which is, it's um, it was done before, but it was um, basically if you switch colors of the play fields, you can, um, if you do it smartly, you can uh, use the same colors on each line, or each line has its yeah. own color. But if you display right. them in a correct way, it, it looks like, um, yeah, if you look now at the screen, you see like the uh, the ladders and the platforms. Yes. It looks like... Yeah, they're, they're... they are on their own separate line, but exactly. it's very subtle. Yeah. Very subtle. Yeah, which makes um, it easy it, to and display. They... Yeah. And it gives a texture to uh, the play field as well, rather than just solid blocks. It's got, you know, some lines and you put a bit of decoration in between where the ladders are as well. Exactly. Yeah, and the same goes yeah. for the gold. If you look at the gold, it's basically... A little piece of a letter uh, combined <laughs> yes. with, with some some platform uh, background, and and that's how twenty six hundred games come about. Is these clever workarounds that don't disrupt the the way it plays, but it allows the twenty six hundred to utilize its rather powerful playfield abilities, right. which have been more and more utilized in uh, homebrew games. Um, and they're quite, it, it's quite versatile it is. once you kind yeah. of th think in a different way about how to put things on the screen. Yeah, that, that's what uh, I like about the 2600 developing also. It's like the limitations are, are that big, but if you know the, the limitation, get, you can get creative saying, okay, but what if I do this? And then uh, yeah. you have to go other it's, ways to, to basically <laughs> solve your problem. That's, that's it, it is a limited but very powerful system at the same time. It can do a exactly. lot of things other systems can't do because it doesn't have to store all the visuals in a frame buffer. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's, its frame buffer is a line at a time. It doesn't care what happens the line before and it doesn't care about the, what happens the line after. It only cares about what's going on exactly. on the line right yeah. now, which gives which gives you infinite vertical possibilities, exactly. if I can say yeah. that. Horizontal possibilities, that's limited <laughs> by a lot of things, but but yeah. vertical, it's like, hey, what do you want to draw now? Hey, what do you want to draw now? Each and, line. And the big downside is that that the, 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 the processor is busy with drawing each line, so you don't have 
yeah time for a lot of game logic basically yeah that's that's the the trade-off really is like yeah. it's busy 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 when it's in uh doing its its drawing outside of that that's when you get the time exactly and, and yeah. um which which leads me to my next question is the conversation with john champo about cdfj which does allow you to have more time to do things in a game so maybe talk us through what that conversation was about and how it enabled you to be able to do load runner right yeah so i i met john champo uh, on, on the, the portland Bresso game expo 2019 that was the last one because yeah. it was pre-covid yeah um, that's right uh, he's a really nice guy john um and and he was walking around the, the atari age booth um and and i spoke to him a couple of times and um i i think we talked about um next game so he knew I, I had the Tower of Rubble just finished and he, he just asked me, okay, are you working on the game? And I said, well, I, I've kind of, I have an idea, but I can't figure out how to do it. It's not possible on the, the 2600. It's just not possible. So I explained them the, the problems. And, and Like not possible in terms of enough time to draw the things you need to do? Yeah, it's not possible in the amount of RAM I needed and not possible in the RAM. amount of um, basically the logic I need to execute also yeah. Um, okay yeah because for for all those uh, uh, for all the, the the guards which are chasing you they have like an, an, a limited uh, AI artificial intelligence kind of tracking you um, <laughs> right which I, I suppose is possible on uh, uh, on that limited uh, CPU like on the, the, yeah. the, the 6507, but you need like yeah. all the screen to do your calculations. And that's, that's it's not enough just right. to do the calculation while you're in, in fee blank or, or not drawing anything on the screen. Um, Were you, did, you, did you consider, I'm sure you did, um, dividing up the logic between multiple frames? Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. the guards, you know, they go for a very, they go for a distance for a while. It doesn't, they're not instant twitchy kind of things. Well, they are, but they may not need to be. Right? Yeah, right. But actually, they are. They, they're uh, each, each, each frame. They can change their position, basically. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Which, so which they is react also, yeah. very quickly. Right. Yeah. Um, but basically, basically, I, I uh, explained John about it, and he said, "Well, did you look at uh, 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 using CDFJ?" And um, mm -hmm. I, I said, yeah, I've, I've looked at it. I'm not sure how it works. How I, I didn't quite understand how the two CPUs work together. Right. Um, right. And, and basically, what he did, he, he said, okay, I've got, I've got uh, like 15 minutes. Just go sit down. I open my laptop and I show you what, <laughs> how it works, basically. So he, he gave me like oh, a wow. short crash course, and it was really. <laughs> I was, I was kind of okay. I can do this. Just give me, yeah. just give me a hello world example in in using ARM programming, right. and I can do it. So basically, so it's just it a, took a, off then. A, so it was just like a hump you needed to get over to understand the basics of of how the right. two processes are in, in, interacted, and how you could utilize the ARM to help with what you've come up with already. Right. Yeah. I, I basically he, he he explained to me how the the connection between the arm and the uh the 2600 works um and it's 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 basically it's an, a data stream that can help you like the arm can build a data stream of data and you can read that from the uh 6507 and and use it for the the tia to to display basically um okay so it's, it's, it's like a stream of information yeah. right you, you're preparing okay. your your official display on the arm and you have like a stream of information that's that's you can pull off yeah it's like a stream basically um yeah and basically yeah once that clicked it uh it it all makes sense to me like okay this is this is a, a step forward and and it's sure it's going to help me to to create this game and that that's yeah. after that i started like a proof of concept basically yeah so t take us through the timeline from, I mean, you publicly posted about it in 2000, um, 
what is it, 2019 November, which was, I guess, shortly after um, a Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Yeah. And you posted a screenshot and said, I'm going to make Fool's Gold. Now, t step us through the timeline of what happened between okay. then. You know, there was beta testing. There was negotiations with Tozai. Yeah. There's talks with that. Maybe uh, talk about the big hurdles yeah. that you had yeah, to go through. Yeah, I have to do it on the, top, on the top of my head, but you probably, I think, uh, the proof of concept was shortly after the uh, Portal uh, uh, Retro Gaming Expo. So it was like November, yeah. you said. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. W what I did then is the, the proof of concept was basically uh, displaying the, the stuff. So I kept like a little uh, movement of the, uh, uh, the little. Uh, Runner, the road runner, within an yep. within an, uh, a platforms uh, uh, playfield, um, and I think I took a couple of months to get a real playable game, like uh, okay. with, with guards and uh, different levels also, and I think that was around, I think, June, the beginning of June in 2020. That's when I contacted Tozai. And, um, okay, and, that and, early. Okay. Yeah, for the people who don't know, so Load Runner is actually um, it's it's uh, um, uh, Tozai is really the owners, the intellectual owners of uh, Load Runner, and and Load Runner is still an actual game. If you if your Switch or your Xbox, you can still download or buy yeah. uh, Load Runner, um, which yeah, is a make, different they version. They keep putting out. To... Yeah. Yeah, they keep putting out different versions on because it's a very beloved game. It is, and it is. it's a great puzzle game, so people can still want to play it. Yeah, yeah, and 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 yeah. Tozai, who are, are like like owning the game, they really um, they're doing a really good job to to bring uh, load runs to all the new platforms. Basically, that I, I think that's yeah. kind of their mission. Like they know they got a great game, and they want to bring it to all yeah. the platforms: Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. Um, so uh, that's the reason I contacted those because basically I want to make uh, I wanted to make this game as Load Runner and not like yes a, a Mine yeah, Runner change the name change right. the yeah Mine Runner was another name you you had very short a very short for a very short amount of time okay. um, and that yeah I have some some build that says Mine Runner on it okay yeah um, you must have posted maybe as the 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 build was called that or something. And I looked it up, and some other versions called Mine Runner. I can't remember. Um, on some other platform, maybe another version of it. Right. Um, okay. So continue on. You right. contacted yeah. Tozai. So I, I contacted Tozai. Um, I basically wrote them an email saying, uh, "Hi, I'm, I'm Dion, and I, I'm, I'm working on Load Runner. I want to release it for the 2600." Um, showed some yeah. some screenshots, basically. Um, and initially, they, they said, well, it looks really good, but, but we're not that interested, um, which I, it, it kind of makes sense, right? It's, it's an old system. Not yeah. really a lot of copies will be sold. It's, it's not in the uh, amount of uh, copies sold, which they're used to on the Switch. Um, no. But, but no. then they said, well, okay, you obviously, you, you like Load Runner. Uh, can we have a short call? So we had a short call. On on, uh, on Skype, and it was a really nice call. They're really nice people. They talked about Load Runner, how they uh, got the game, uh, what what all the things they're working on, um, and basically what they said is, okay, um, well, work work a bit longer on the game, um, yeah. um, and, and they said also at the same time we, they were really busy with other kind of games that are uh, releasing. They have an all a range of games basically. Uh, Load Runner is one of the games. Okay. Um, they also uh, have the rights to uh, R-Type and Spelunker, a, a, a oh. lot of games, and they're releasing yeah. that. Love on... Spelunker as well. Yeah, it's it's, it's also a cool game. Um, <laughs> so basically, we took the time to work out the deal, and um, that's the time which uh, I think if a month later I uh, I pulled in L from Atari Age. Um, yeah. So basically, they knew like, okay, this is like someone serious. Atari H, they they have quality yeah. products. Uh, they have a shop, um, and, and I guess then it 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 clicked for them, saying, okay, this looks like right. a serious shop. Um, they then they're <laughs> yeah. gonna make a great version of Load Runner, 
which um, yeah. uh, yes, it's, it's basically a tribute to to the old version. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, so, that's so good. They the, saw that that yeah. there was quality there, and that's what convinced them. Rather than pure sales number, it's like, well, it's not enough for us to make enough money. Right. So why would we put our name behind it? It's just too much trouble and right. the paperwork. It'll probably any profit they make would go into the lawyers to draft up the paperwork. So, um, <laughs> right. it's great that that they really love Load Runner enough that they would let you have the name and put it out in in the quantities that homebrew sells right and that's that's yeah. really really nice of them yeah I, th I think that they recognize like the, the the love we have for the game and and that also goes for l who i think he, he still has the original load runner on his atari <laughs> which was one of the first games he bought so he was he was oh, all wow. into this 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 port of uh, load runner <laughs> Um, well, that shows you how much love there is for the game. Yeah. That, that everybody's just like thumbs up all the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think when I contacted Tozai, I had like three or four levels already done. I, I worked yeah. on a uh, level editor to make it easier for me to just draw the levels and, and uh, uh, store them in, in, in ROM. Um, yep. And I'm just thinking when the beta testing uh, when that started i don't uh, remember. I, think I think that was... somebody somebody posted it in 2020 um yeah some some time around 2020 mid 2020 maybe yeah maybe i thought it was more like end of 2020 maybe uh, i'm not sure yeah. um yeah so you, so you brought a bunch of beta testers on board yeah and i i would tanya and i were were amongst those right and um yeah i, I put out a message you, on you atari had... saying who wants to uh test a new game i cannot say who which game it is but it's uh, <laughs> it's a cool game and i got yeah a and, load and your of reputation people. pers well after after tower of rubble and and amoeba jump i'm sure people were very excited to find out what what you had up your sleeve right. and you got more than enough people volunteering yeah yeah and i even at, at some point had to say okay just stop i have enough testers and that's <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to test to turn down people that want to test your game but uh uh yeah there's only that so much you can do of course and and so at the point that you had the the beta testers um on board i can't remember initially if you had all of the levels ready uh, all 150, or you added them on as you went. I, I um, think that might have been you had a lot, but maybe not all of them. Yeah, I, I think I had them all, but I didn't test them all. And that was <laughs> what I basically <laughs> did is took the original levels, um, redraw yes. them a bit, and because that's that's yep. um, one of the design decisions I had to make, because I, I wanted right. to have have the graphics look kind of cool, like you see at the moment. Um, yeah, I had to really limit the, uh, yeah. basically the amount of columns that the game has, um, right. and also also the rows. Um, yeah. So what what I had to do is is look at the original levels and then adapt that that same level um, for the twenty six hundred, which is slightly less rows and um, slightly less columns, basically. Um, right, and and I guess you were able to compact it down. And keep the feeling of the original levels without losing any of the, the functionality. Like if it had a long, uh, like in this level, say a long, uh, you know, pathway, you would just shorten some of the parts that don't really matter. Like okay, the ladders are over there. Let's not mess with those. Right. Let's keep the ladders on the left-hand side, but the middle we can shrink down a bit. Right. Exactly. And and that I know that was a design decision to go for a different size of the. Uh, of the grid of the platform basically um yeah and if you compare that to to that that uh leprechaun that that's also like a kind of a, a load runner game um i yeah. think they took like uh one play field pixel per letter um which okay. allows them they, they basically use twice the space so they can um, basically copy the original levels in um right but I, yeah i tested that and that didn't work for me basically so Right, right. I opted to go for this. Uh, so, how wide was the original, and how wide is yours? Oh, that's a good question. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's forty. It's forty wide, probably. Right. Yours I, is forty wide. Yeah, I, I wrote it down somewhere. So, it's it's forty <laughs> pixels wide, 
uh, but but yeah. either each each uh, uh, basically tile has two pixels, so it's like yeah. Twenty. So the ladders have two playfield pixels. Right. Uh, each of the blocks has two playfield pixels, and each of the gold occupies a space of two playfield pixels. Right. It's not as wide. Um, those are those are single playfield the golds, but they don't slam up against each other. Right. I think I just have to look it up on <laughs> the Atari 2600 I think, pages. I think Tanya's, all, Tanya's almost solved this one. She's got no, the idea. Now I've it's got the, the idea. Now it's the execution <laughs> yeah. of, of level three. You said Le level three, level three on the demo. is a demo really, is... really hard one. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a real puzzle element to it. Like yeah. Timing. Time, it. timing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, but um, you, you got it. You, basically, you got the the you got it solved now. Uh, now <laughs> now it's down to timing yeah. and not make, make any mistakes. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did it! I think. Oh, now you have to wait again. Yes. Okay. The yeah. Double walking on his head. But but anyway, the the beta testers were really awesome. Like, um, I think we did, and there there were like. 10 11 12 active testers and and, and yeah. you were you and tanya were, were one of them of course uh which yeah. gave a lot of feedback for all the levels um yeah he basically asked us to go through all the levels and make sure they were winnable right and playable and and look for bugs as well yeah. at the same time and there was 150 levels so having that much beta that many beta testers is really great that uh right oh, uh, to help you, what happened? Oh, you ran out of time or something? No, 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 I got stuck. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, and, and, and each, you know, some people made it through all 150, right? But yeah. some people didn't have, you know, enough time to do all 150, and you had this great uh spreadsheet yeah. to fill in and say, Yes, I did this one, yes, I was able to, or yes, but there were some issues, right? Yeah, I got a lot of really good feedback, and um, I, I think probably, um. The, the one that helped the most was uh, uh, Thomas Jens. Yeah. Um, he he really helped with with uh, um, uh, basically compacting all the levels into 11k. Yes. And that that was one of the <laughs> issues I I had. Astounding. Yeah. And that was um, I think even before uh, I, I invited all the beta testers, I was already working with Thomas on. Uh, right. Compacting all the levels, um, and and uh, basically I needed that to create a game because uh, the, the cartridge is uh, 32k, and yeah. I did some calculations and I think um, how much does I, your code take up? Right, I, I did some. Uh, so the original game, how they how they uh, store it on disk is um, when you look at each tile. There are like 10 different possibilities for a tile. It could be like a, a gold, it could be stone, it could be like a, a leather, right. stuff like pass, that. Pass, pass through. Pass through, the, yeah. hidden, the hidden ones, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's up to 10. So you can uh, basically encode two tiles in one byte. You can uh, learn to right. the high nibble for, for 10 and the low nibble also for 10. That, that kind of works. Um, right, and I did did some calculations, and it ended up like 22k, which is it's it's a lot for <laughs> because that meant for 32 that I only have like to work with, yeah, a 10k uh, to to program the game for all the graphics that was not gonna fly. Um, yeah, so so then basically I looked into run length encoding, which means right. that if you encode like a platform going from left to right, you don't say. <laughs> You don't name each tile in each byte, but you say, yeah. uh, I've, I've got stone for, for 20, Ten of them. for 20, a 20 size stone. That's it. And that, and that would seem like a very, um, applicable, uh, encoding technique for this because a lot, there's a lot of horizontal, right. um, in a lot of the levels, a lot of horizontal that are exactly the same, right. especially space. Like if you look at this level, there's a ton of space and then a ton of platform. Exactly. Um, so that would really compact it down. So how much did it, that compact it down? Uh, that, that, I think that compacted it down from 22K to 16. Not, not bad. Not as not much bad. as you would expect, but not still. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. And and that's there also are some comp yeah. complex levels as well. Like there's a lot of patterns in levels that don't really compress that well. Right. You're like one of this, one of this, one of this, yeah. and it would it wouldn't do much for a lot of levels. Yeah. And then I I worked with Thomas Jens some more, and then we we tried all kind of things. So he was saying, well. If you divide it by uh, uh, levels that you encode like horizontally and vertically, eventually we, we now have uh, some s uh, kind of spiral encoding um, where the run length oh. goes from the, the left upper corner and it just spirals down. Um, oh, wow. And that really works to encode both the horizontal platforms but also the letters. Right, right, yes, yes. Uh, Very smart. Yeah. And, and basically then Thomas came with, uh, I already looked at Hoffman encoding, which is an, another thing you can do to compact it even more. Um, and uh, I got some sample code from him and we, we, we did a lot of experimenting to get it down to 11K. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and basically I, I added all kinds of bells and whistles to the game. So now it's like almost completely full 32K of <laughs> programming levels uh, artwork music um. wow let's let's talk about the way the levels come on the screen and disappear from the screen yep. the the circular wipe now the way you described the encoding is there any correlation between the way it's displaying on the screen and the encoding going in a spiral or is that just coincidence uh, it's it's kind of coincidence yeah uh, be okay. Because for the, the 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 effect you're talking about is that the, I think they call it like the iris in, iris out, zooming. Yeah. Um, yeah, iris wipe. Iris yeah. wipe. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's that, a cheesy that's, effect in, yeah. in movies if you want to do it, but yeah, it works really well on and, a, and a video game. And basically, that's not even encoding there. It's not encoded. It's just uh, calculated on the fly. So I, I do real oh. calculation on the fly, and I. I hide some of the uh, play field there. Wow, I would have thought that would have been a stored pattern in ROM. Right. Like just, okay, take a look and, and display in this order. But uh, right. So you do on the fly, like almost, it, it looks like a circle. Is it a circle calculated or something kind of close to kind, a circle? Kind, it's, it's kind of close to a circle, you're right. Uh, which, <laughs> right. Which so makes no it, pi yeah. involved, no 3.141 involved yeah, in exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's more like that. <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and the thing is, I, I want to, basically in the beginning, I wanted to test out the ARM chip. Just want to know, like, how, how much power do I have? Um, right. And it's it's not unlimited power. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I really had to do a lot of optimization to get that, that spiral effect in. Um, yeah. And I, I remember uh, doing it, and it was really slow in the beginning. I was trying to, to mimic the original spiral zoom and spiral effect, which was right. really slow. Um, yeah, somebody made a comment on Facebook or something yeah. about, oh, it's 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 much faster yeah. than it's... the the original one. And maybe the original one was limited by the speed of the computer doing it. Yeah, could be. Um, could be. Yeah. Uh, but but if the, the slow speed is really annoying. When I go back to playing that version, it's almost like, oh, come on with the effect. It's it's cool. But right. Not if you but play not it that every, cool. Yeah, not yeah. that cool. It's not it's not worth the wait every time, especially 150 times plus number of deaths it, it compounded. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a cool effect. So I, I speed it up a, a lot, basically. I think that's a good, yeah. a, a wise decision. <laughs> um, so talk a little bit about the uh, enemy AI and um, now I thought I had it written down but you got it from uh, a book you exactly. found the enemy AI code from book now was the whole code of the game in the book or was it pseudo code of the enemy AI it was so there's a, a book on uh, learning uh, learning to program C with the code of, of yes. Load Runner. And it was, um, I think it was published in Japan only. Um, oh, okay. Uh, and I, I, I looked for the book everywhere. It's you, you cannot buy it. It's it's nowhere to be found, basically. <laughs> but some people oh, have wow. copies of it. Um, and it, it contains the actual code of Load Runner in C, the full code. It's all there. Um, which which is kind of oh, amazing, wow. right? Yeah. 
Um, but but luckily for me, there was someone on the internet who basically read the complete book, um, took, yeah. took the code and and uh, converted it from C to JavaScript. Um, and that's that's somewhere uh, still on the internet. You can find it. And basically, that's uh, uh, that's the code I used as a reference. Um, because um, so you didn't um, so you didn't you never had access to the original book and you never saw the original book. No, you, no. you just had access to the, the recoding of it. Yeah. Which yeah. was in JavaScript. So I had to convert that back to C again. Uh, but basically, oh, OK, I, I didn't convert it. I just read the code took the logic from it and, and re-implemented that, uh, basically. Um, okay. Um, when you leave, leave your headset, because I can't hear them very well. It cuts out. Oh, it cuts out on yeah. mine, too. Okay. Yes. So you heard what I heard of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, was, I heard enough. Um, yeah, so, so basically, it has the original AI, and it works. Um, it, that's it, amazing. So it's exactly so. People who played the original version are going to be completely comfortable with this one, right? And will be like, "Oh, I know how to manipulate them right. perfectly." And these are all the original levels, just just ported to the twenty six hundred. And if you look at the levels, you see the same patterns that the the uh, the guards take. I think from most of the levels, they have exactly the same pathway they 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 choose. Some of the levels which I had to kind of optimize or, or squeeze a bit. Sometimes it's a bit different, but the logic is, is there. Um, and that, right. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's somebody who... Um, it, which, which actually leads me to my, my next question. Um, with a, such a high-profile port, like Load Runner, like it's super well-known, did you feel any pressure from yourself to deliver a game that wouldn't disappoint long-term fans that would be like people would be able to get on it and go this is load runner and and was there any pressure to to be like oh this better deliver to those those super fans of load yeah runner? Well, I'm, I'm i'm not sure i think most of the pressure is from myself uh yeah. uh wh whenever i make a game i'm, I'm i want it to be like a spot on a cool animation and because this is one of my favorite games of the uh, Commodore 64. I just wanted to know this. This has to be really, really good, and that, that's why I take took a time to create like a proof of concept. Once I, I had the proof of concept right. and I knew I had access to the original AI logic, um, yeah. then for me it all, all all came together, saying, "Okay, I, I've, I can design the screens, I can design all the levels, I've got the original AI code." I can yeah. do this. It's going to be a good port, basically. Yeah, and and the translation of of all of that that you mentioned, the AI and the the level design, um, shines through. Like you right. can you can feel it when you play the game. It feels exactly like the original game. All the timings are the same. The fall speed, right. the, the digging speed, uh, every everything about it. Somebody hopping on this, you could probably tell them that it was a different. Uh, console or a computer system and they'd be like oh okay and they would never figure out it's a 2600 yeah and, unless and it, they it's, it's maybe also saw the, the 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 flicker the flicker management maybe they'd get a hint if there's a lot of guards on the same yeah. line but beyond that it's 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 like flicker free you couldn't tell that it's a 2600 game right yeah, and I know some I'm, I've got some uh, feedback from people saying oh maybe you need some background music um, and uh, may maybe uh, some some different sounds, and I, I really I, I thought about it, um, and then I, I kind of decided to keep this an, a tribute to the original, basically. Um, right. So it kind of plays at the as, as the very old version, the Commodore 64, the, the initial release on all the home computers. Um, right. And it's it's different from uh, versions like the the Nintendo NES version, which. Uh, I'm not sure if you know yeah, that the, version. It's 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 different. It's not one screen. It's like a scrolling screen, and it has background yes. music. It's more Nintendo-like. Uh, yeah, in its appearance as well. But I mean, the the playability, the the way it plays and the way it displays on some of the some of the ports, you can't see the whole screen, which is 
it's important to see the whole screen, I think, For me because it is. of the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manipu- the, the manipulation of the guards that you have to do. Right. Like, it is, that's part of the game on so many of these levels. It's mm-hmm. not just outrunning them or, you know, being ahead of them or, you know, it's the, like, especially in this level, Tanya's been. I'm just, yeah, I did it once. You, you now I to, can't, I can't repeat it, but yeah. <laughs> you have to manipulate the guard on this. Yeah. To climb the ladder at a certain time, yeah. and yeah. Um, sometimes you have to bury the guards at a certain time to mm-hmm. delay them enough that you can get to a different spot. Um, uh, going back to the AI, uh, <coughs> uh, Thomas Yanch says the AI seems irritating. Um, <laughs> how, how complex is it? So, uh, like you, you had to change the code. How is it a fairly complex AI, or is it just like? You are on this side of the guard, and you're below the guard. Therefore, go that way. Yeah, it's 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 pretty basic the AI, um, and I yeah. think I, I read some stories about uh, how it was programmed. And um, uh, b- basically, I think uh, uh, Doug Smith took the AI and and uh, tried to improve it also. So he he wrote the AI of the guards and then tried to improve it, make it better. And then it turned out that the game was really too hard to play, not that fun anymore. <laughs> so there, there are kind of uh, right. there are glitches in the AI. Uh, some yeah. some shortcuts were taken there, which make it really interesting. But yeah. um, if if you look at the AI code, basically, uh, when a guard wants to um, um, uh, wants to chase you around, so that you want to calculate the position of a guard, um, it basically looks at the platform to see if it go can go all to the left and all to the right. And then it, it basically tries out all the movements. So it, it tries to go all to the left and then to the top of the screen. Not actually animating okay. that, but that's in the code. Like it's it's trying paths, oh. basically. Um, it's, it's looking ahead it's, and looking yeah. at its pathways. Oh, I didn't think it was that complex. That's it, interesting. It's, yeah, it, it's actually doing that. And then it's, it's, it's uh, creating a score saying, okay, if I go to the left and then up this ladder, um, um, uh, I will be uh, uh, um, well higher than the load runner, and that scores extra points. And if I go to the ah. left, and I can even get more close. So you get some like a score wow. algorithm. Maybe, maybe, yeah, oh wow, it's... that is that's pretty complex for like a twenty six hundred yeah. to translate to a twenty six hundred game. Well, is for a time, I think it was really, scoring system really s- a smart AI system. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about the changes from the original game. And I know there's one of the major changes is lives and score yeah. and how you change that for this one. So talk a bit about what has changed and the reasoning behind this change. Right. Yeah. So um, basically, I think that was when all the beta testers were, were testing the things, uh, I, I think back then it still had the original logic, the original playability where you have like five, five lives um, yeah. and you can, can die in a level and then uh, your, your, your lives are uh, decremented and you, you, you can try another guy, uh, you can give it another go. Um, yeah. but, but for me, something didn't work there because um, I, I, for me, I like to play the game, and basically, I want to see all the levels. I, I don't yeah. don't want to play the game and get stuck at one level, and then just because I, I only have two life, I I, I I get stuck in that level. I have to yeah, do it all over again, basically. Um, yeah, start from the beginning and do all the levels you just did, yeah. and then get to the part where you have to practice again, and then you fail again, and have to start all right. over again. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, that was, so I, I basically took a, a couple of weeks off the game, just playing other games to see how I can improve <laughs> the, the gameplay. And I had, um, had a lot of discussions with Gentex, which is also, he, he tested other games. It's, uh, I think he's called uh, David. Um, okay. And he was a tester for PitCat. Um, which okay. I know you, you also yep. played. He, mm. he, he tested that game, yep. and he came yep. with a lot of good suggestions also on, on playability, how to improve the levels. He did. He he actually improved a lot of levels for me. Where he said, "Okay, I just uh. already draw the new levels. Just put a block here, and it works." Uh, so big shout out yes, to him. Yes, yeah. I mean, he would be uh, an expert at 
platform games like uh, Pit Cat is yeah. is very has very similar qualities uh, to this. You have to traverse. It's a puzzle uh, platformer game. Right. Um, you can you can manipulate the board in essence. Yeah, and he, yeah. he found some very weird weird bugs. Like he was he found a bug where he said, well. Uh, if I, I dig seven holes, the eight hole, after the eight hole, the, the system doesn't work anymore, or it, it's, it gets stuck somewhere. Oh. Mm. And I was reading it, said, and I was thinking, <laughs> can, you, can you dig more than seven holes at once? Uh, yeah, there's a timing issue there. It's right. like, how fast can, is he digging these holes? Yeah, and that, that was basically a bug in the code because I just took a, a, a number of seven there, thinking, okay, that was probably like a good, good educated guests to, to take there um, yeah. and actually I had to test it there and then um, uh, basically timed it out how fast people could do it and uh, it, it turned out that you yeah. can even dig 10 uh, uh, 10 at the oh. same time so <laughs> vastly underestimated yeah then. yeah yeah uh, but anyway the gameplay that's where where I basically changed the gameplay also saying okay I want to move away from the uh, game over. There's no more game over now. There's no more uh, lives. It's now about unlocking levels, which is what, what modern right. gameplay is all about. It, they, they want to. Yes, it is. You, they want to have you playing the game. Just try again. It's it's forgiving. Yeah, pe people want to see the levels. They want to feel a sense of accomplishment and not mm -hmm. frustration. Right. Was there a temptation to build in both um, play schemes? where there are lives in one way and then the other way where you can just keep retrying the level over and over again. Right. Yeah, I, I thought about having them both, but eventually I wanted to have like this, this more modern way of, of playing the game. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm still happy with that decision. I think it, it turned out uh, well. Mm -hmm. I, I think so too. I, I like that aspect of playing these games i want to see all the levels i want to get mm -hmm. to the end right mm -hmm. and i want to try all the puzzles too at the same time not get stuck on you know level 37 and i just can't <laughs> figure it out so i'll never see 38 and above ever right it's just not going to happen yeah um so you implemented a password system that um now is it a per level password or is it you go up if you have the password to level 149, you can play all the ones before that. Right. Yeah. It's it's um, so it's a password for the unlocked level. Thank you. That, that's basically what it is. Okay. So if you, so have, you have to keep track of yeah. all, you have to keep track of all 150 unlock keys and levels. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a, it's an, a pass key which is generated, uh, but it also contains yeah. a score. So it's like the score. Mm. Oh, uh, wow. It also contains the the level that you unlocked, so it knows you unlocked level 16, so all the levels before 16 you can play. Okay. Uh, it also sc uh, stores like the the speed you selected. If you want to play it fast, it stores that. Um, even even oh, the theme okay. is there. So if you like to play yeah. theme two, that's that's going to be stored oh. in that key. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really really good. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing is, when you have like the the safe key or um, yep. the Atari Fox, you don't you don't yep, need which we have those, plugged uh, in right now. Yeah, you have that right, so you don't need to write down or make oh. make a photocopy or a picture of that, that okay. key. Mm. Um, so when you boot up again, it'll remember uh, the the level you have unlocked. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you can display the key on the screen as well at any time if you want. Right. The, to the level that you have you've accomplished yeah so if you don't have a safe key you can still play it and you can still maybe make a picture of the 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 unlock code so next time you can just type yes. it in or type it in uh with, with a joystick yes. and you can just lock the <laughs> level again yeah. yeah um so load runner seems like a very natural extension of tower of rubble um there's some similarities there there's blocks that uh, uh, disappear. There's blocks that appear. There's blocks in this. There's the animation, the movement of right. the characters. Yeah. Uh, a lot of um, frames of animation. Um, so, was there some knowledge that you were able to bring over from Tower of Rubble? Um, yeah. Well, that yeah. that would apply to this game, or was it kind of more of a clean slate? And it was just like the 
more of the knowledge of the workings of the 2600. Yeah, I, I think Tower of Robo was the, my first game where I worked with Playfield. I didn't use Playfield before, so I, I used that, yeah. that, that knowledge which I had. Which I had. Um, about the animation, that's, um, that, that's a bit different than the animation in Tower of Robo. Uh, in, I'm not sure if you can see it in Tower of Robo, where you go from one tile to the other. It's a fixed yeah. animation. You cannot stop halfway. Yeah. Um, That's and, right. Yeah, with That's a tile-based game. Right, it yeah. is. With Load Runner, it's different. You can stop any any millisecond, and it just stops the animation there, yeah. basically. Right. So it's it's more precise. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the original game is, is kind of famous for having, is being one of the first games to ever have a level editor. Um, was that a consideration that you thought of putting in at some point? It, um, yeah, it, it was. A and what did you use to build your own levels? At, 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 as a follow-up question, what did you use to build your own levels? And would you release that and somehow make a level editor going forward? Uh, there are future plans to to do something like that. Like there there is a level editor, but it's not in the game. It's an uh, it's yeah. it's more like an existing tool which you can download and, and run on on Windows and Mac, um, which gives you access to to the map and and editing levels basically. Um, mm. There there's something working like that, but the, the, those are future <laughs> plans. I'm not sure what to do with it yet, but um, and okay. I, I also... was it a size consideration? Like to fit the level editor also into the 32k? Yeah, there was a different way. So so creating a level editor. Is kind of complex, and I didn't have that much uh, ROM anymore to do anything. Um, yeah. Also, also storing a level on a safe key or something. Right. It's it's really a lot of data. Basically, too much for a safe key. Um, oh, okay, okay. And so you'd uh, have to. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe you could store one level, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I know level editing oh. is, is possible on the 2600, but for this game, it's going to be come too complex. Um, but right. just keep in mind, there How is many... a level editor, and it's I have plans yes. to do something with it, uh, where people can uh, nice. generate their own levels and, and play it. Because um, like I keep going back to Draconian. He had a, um, a text-based level editor that people could make their own levels, and he included some of the levels in the game. Yeah. Um, maybe that's a possibility where people can export somehow to the save key or right. display it on the screen in hexadecimal, and then you can compile the best levels that people vote on or something yeah. and make, you know, Load Runner Part 2 the best levels or, you know, the, yeah, they, they, they uh, a, fun, a fun collection of new levels. The they, extended they kind of version did something, something similar with, with the original Load Runner, also, where you have the. Uh, Load Runner Championship, and it's, it's right. basically um, after the original version came out, a lot of people worked on the level editor and created their own levels, and they, they took like yeah. the 50 coolest or most hard levels and and uh, joined <laughs> them together. Um, yeah, and that that would be really cool. So I'm I'm thinking in along those lines basically. I think that would do really well, especially involving the community and right. getting people yeah. to make those levels and say if, if you include uh 150 user generated levels that's 150 sales exactly <laughs> right there they, yeah. they want to buy their own game that they made yeah um there there was a question about the the level order in the full game mm. um did you go with the order of the original game or did you rearrange the order um of like how you felt increasing in difficulty to the end right well but what i basically did is use the original 150 levels and those are here in the same exactly the same order um okay and e even looking at the original levels i know some of the later levels are actually pretty basic and some of the early ones are, are pretty hard i think um, um but but maybe maybe <laughs> that's just me playing the game um because sometimes it takes a while to to see the the trick in a, in, in solving a level. Even even for me, it was like th this one was a really hard one for me, um, and that, that's why. I <laughs> Ten is still it struggling here. with it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good for the demo. Include two easy ones and then yep. throw them a curveball. It's like, yeah. oh, you think you're good, huh? Yeah. Well, here you go. Here's you it's have to. It's all use... about precise timing on this. It's one. like, oh, there's only one guard. It's, it's gonna frustrating be super because easy. I was able to get on that ladder twice, and I now saw. I just can't. I now I'm just like, I just can't time it right. <laughs> but I, uh, it, but it is one of those levels where it's just. Thomas it's says, so go to the left first and onto the small ladder. I'm guessing, he, like, you fell with the guy at one point. Did that kind of work out? It's, like it's actually, and... I got onto that smaller ladder from, from the left from to the, the left. right. Yeah. That was when I was successful of, of, of getting on there. So. RC70 says, am I crazy? It was a bl board blue before. You changed, yeah, I changed, changed, I changed the colors. I changed the colors. And, and therefore the uh, the sounds as well. Yes. So people I, wanted to, I wanted to show the... Cool. No, no that's all right. <laughs> uh, uh, Dios Kilo says, I think Tanya needs to follow him down as he falls. So it's Yeah, because you fall faster. Oh, now I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> you fall faster. This is when you're not paying attention. Um, you fall faster than him, so you have right. to take advantage of that. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's just frustrating because I did it twice, and then now, now that I need to do it, I can't. Nostalgic uh, added about the level editor and mm. suggesting that making a plus cart version that accesses the user-made levels online that you can download the levels. I'm not sure how that would work, but there's been, yeah, uh, Fort, Ap Fort Apocalypse's game accessed the levels from online that is cool. um, yeah. of, his, of his helicopter game. So that's a possibility to think about yeah. as well. Like you could have them in a specific place on the Plus Store and just name them level one, level two, level three, and the game knows to go to that directory and get them. So that's, oh, that's e a, even that's if a it's cool like, idea, actually. yeah, yeah, at, maybe as it's being developed, that can be a way of doing it. Yeah. Um, and then when it's all done, you know, you put them all on the cartridge because not everybody has access to a plus card or etc. etc. Right. Yeah. So that's that's an interesting yeah, that's, thought that's of doing it. Really yeah. a good good suggestion, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to the game that you didn't have room or time for? Um, other than the level editor? I think probably a level editor, but I wasn't even if I had like two, 10k more, I'm not sure if I would create a level a level editor in here. Um, yeah. Or add your own levels that you created as an extension like was there any room left over or not enough to that, to do anything with really right there, there was some room but i i kind of kept it for adding some additional graphics also like the splash screens in the beginning where i wanted right. to show like the tozai logo and uh, some something added for the menu um yeah yeah basically not even the level editor. I'm I'm sorry, but uh, there there's like a level editor which is outside the game, and that's that's a really yeah. cool one. Um, yeah. And it, it comes guessing it has maybe or yeah. I'm guessing it has like all the different pieces along the bottom, and you click on them, and you move to the place you want to put it, and right. someone yeah. like that, right? Because you can use the sprites as a you know crosshairs or something to move where you want to go. Right. Yeah. 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 It would it would be a very cool level editor. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm guessing it is a GUI version. Yeah, it is, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um let's talk a little <coughs> bit about the <coughs> artwork. Me. I know we'll talk more about the release on Atari Age Day Fall Edition after all the releases are out in the store, in the Atari Age store. But um the artwork by David Exton is really excellent <laughs> and yeah. very foreboding. Yeah, and uh, the the ominous portrayal of the bungling guard—I think that's <laughs> what it's called. Yeah, the red bungling guard climbing up of the the destroyed floor. Um, it's it's really really good and and really gives a an idea of what the game is supposed to be portraying in exactly. you know, real life or whatever. Yeah. Um, how did that match up of David Exton and yourself happen? Yeah, so I I, I contacted Dave. Um... I think right after we we had an uh, um, we had an officially signed license deal with with Tozai, um, so right. then I knew okay this game is gonna it's gonna happen because now we have the license with Tozai they're okay with releasing this um, 
right. and you can call uh, it load runner etc 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I know some of the artwork. Yeah. Which, Ten, you uh, did it! Yay! Yeah. 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 Uh, now she has oh, to this, escape, this though. This is cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. So now you think you're you're locked in, but. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. Is there another? Is there another twist coming? I think you know how to manipulate the guards enough that. I oh yeah, so. that's all you have to wait for. There you go. Uh, just you're need good. To make sure he doesn't. Yeah, you don't want to go up that ladder too early. Oh I'm no, I'm guessing he'll come back after you. Let's see if there's a congratulations. Yeah. It, congratulations, this is one of the, it's yeah. just, By the way, also on... Yay! Yeah, it's working. Demo over. <laughs> spin, spin, spin. Slowing down. But demo over. Took, yeah. took enough yeah. tries. <laughs> Great stuff. 22,000 is the, now the world record for the demo. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so somebody has to beat that. I think that's easy if they can actually... To complete this level before the time runs out. I'm sure they'll. Oh get a lot yeah, of bonus, that's so, true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Continue on with the uh, the discussion of the artwork. Yeah. Of the uh, of the release. Nice, nicely done, uh, Tanya. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if you can solve while, this level, yes. you you can probably solve them all. I think. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think we played just about all the levels when we were doing the beta testing. Well, the ones I, the ones that we had. Yeah, yes. I think the leftover yeah. that people were kind of iffy about and and yeah. i think some of those were the harder ones yeah so. right yeah 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 cool yeah, it was a lot of fun <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm going to go back design. to so, level one um, on this one yep. I, yeah. I i uh, i know dave david created the designs for a uh, robotron he was just working on that and um right another haunting cover right as well. and that, that's it's like oh really, god these people are gonna yeah. die <laughs> that's what really attracted me in in the, his his artwork basically is that that haunting he also did um the the uh, robot city which uh the, the thomas jens uh, game mm. uh oh my god that's a desolate cover oh my god i just love the artwork right. of that too yeah it's just like you're in the middle of nowhere and you're just this tiny tank and oh my god right right yeah. So I, I, I contacted him and, and we talked a bit about the game. He, he really loved Low Runner also. And um, we, we kind of talked about the different artwork styles. So in the, uh, the, the Japanese artwork styles of the, the 80s is really different than the American artwork style for games, basically. Where um, yeah. I know in the, the Japanese army are like, like haunting, dark, uh, gloomy kind of <laughs> you feel chased yeah. and and uh, I, I guess that's what David likes to to do and that was exactly what I was looking for and exactly what what his idea about this game was and and yeah this initial design um, I think it's 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 initial and pre initial drawings were along these lines already so it was the first time like this um, yeah. And he really wanted to have like the the, uh, uh, the guard uh, in front instead of like having the hero uh, in front and having all the the, yeah. the guards uh, behind the hero and all the elements behind the hero. So this is kind of That's different right. approach, but I, I really, really like it. I'm guessing the gun in his hand on the cover is the thing that he's able to dig with. It's the the, right. the digger's zapper gun. Right. Yeah, because it looks like he's going to fire at the guard almost. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, because you can't do that to guards. You can't kill the guards. Well, you can indirectly kill the guards by letting them the dirt cover them over. Right. But they never really die. They get rebuilt at the top of the screen again. Right. You cannot yeah. fire a, 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 a bullet at the guards. The guard. Actually, you're... you're no. The thing you have is more powerful, like the the power to drill holes. Uh, <laughs> it is. That's right. You can go. You can go through the holes. Right. And that's yeah. oh, no. or you can kill yourself like that and and fall in one of your holes, thinking you're safe. I'm gonna hide here. Oh no! It buries itself it over. Is, yeah. Something magically rebuilds the city as you destroy it. <laughs> yeah, and David. Um, by the way, David did also an excellent job on the manual. Um, Oh, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's uh, also been being shown on the uh, Fortnite Retro uh, Gaming Expo. Uh, yeah. Um, if anybody in the chat has any questions for Dion about the game or the release or anything like that, feel free to type it in before we uh, finish this off. Um, 
anything else you want to talk about about the game that we didn't cover? Uh, let me see. I, I wrote it down with two feet. I think we have them oh, all, good. right? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, and the, um, the speed uh, difference. Uh, was that in any of the other games? Um, released the variability of speed. Yeah, yeah, it was. So even in the, oh. I, I know in the Commodore 64 version, there like a, there was a key combination like you have to, to type to to speed up the game. Um, okay. But back in the day, I I didn't even know that. Um, I just played the game right. and I died at level six, I think every time <laughs> because by, by the time I, I came to level six i had like one life so i had one try to to do it and uh, oh my god yeah that's always the worst in old school games it's like right. okay here comes the hard level again and i've only got one life right yeah, yeah Yay. Exactly. <laughs> and i died immediately oh well start over uh, has making this game improved your load runner abilities it has it really has yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm even when I go back playing the original Commodore 64 version, I'm, I'm much better. Um, so right. it's it, 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 it's it's probably pretty close to that version. You, you kind of um, I know this game when I first played the game, I was like uh, being chased by the guards. It, it feels like you're hunted yes. and you make bad decisions yes. because you're just kind of in panic. There's someone hunting you. You're you're panicking. And once you're, uh, and that's how I felt when I played it back in the day too. It's like, oh my god, they're all after yeah. me, and I can't escape, and I can barely outrun them to dig one hole, but then the other ones come, and and like a lot of homebrew games that of like ports that have been made, playing the twenty six hundred version has enhanced my ability to play, say, the arcade game or the original version right. of the game. Yeah. Like like 1942, we played on the sh debuted on the show earlier, yeah. and then I went to the arcade right after, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I just played the arcade game for half an hour right. it, it, on one life, and it just increased my ability so much. Yeah. So I, I can see exactly where you're coming from, I, especially us going through the demo. Mm. Uh, not the demo, the, um, the the beta test. Yes, yeah. And playing all the levels, it's like okay, now I understand this game. Yeah, how understand it plays. the nuances right. and the manipulation of the guards. Yeah, and the, the longer you play it, you you kind of see the pattern of the guards. Also, it's like you kind mm. of feel yes. what they're gonna do. Um, yeah, almost unconsciously at, right. after a point, you're yeah, like, and, 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 oh, if I go this way, right. they'll go that yeah, way. Yeah, and you're fine, not afraid I'm fine, to, I'm to, safe. to run towards the guards because you know, okay, I'm just gonna. Put a hole in the ground here. No, no issue. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the, the fear, the the fear factor drops dramatically after you really get used to the game. Yeah. Quite a bit. So we do have, we do have some questions from the audience. Um, you may not know this, but um, in general, there is an answer for this. After it's the game has been released. Actually, you might know the answer. Uh, will there be a digital release and is that part of the deal with tozai that they said eh, maybe not digital but definitely on cart because i know some games during licensing it's like well they're very specific yeah about what how you can release it yeah so the, so the license basically the license deal that we have with tozai now is for uh cart only um so it's it's there there's now something in the in the license saying this is not about the uh, not about downloads of roms it's card only could okay. be boxed or non boxed um okay um when we personally i'm i'm open to it so but it it will require like another going back to tozai and saying okay we maybe need some other license deal or whatever right. um right uh, and and, and yeah. is the license for just this game and or is I mean you may not be able to get into it um, sequels um, you know extensions yeah it's, it's like it's, oh yeah you have the possibility for extensions of the game there, there's always a possibility then, but yeah, the license is for uh, just this game and just this game on uh, for the 2600 right. uh, released through Atari age right etc etc yeah yeah not not released on, uh, on, on steam or whatever <laughs> yeah. right. no 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 emulator wrap encoding right. so that people can play it through steam yeah. download it through but, an but emulator I, yeah. at the same time i know a lot of people play roms and and the emulators are really yes. good 
So playing this oh, game yeah. on the, the Stella emulator is just the same as, as playing it on the machines. Uh, and I is, know yeah. L from Atari Age is also uh, working on something to get like downloadable ROMs where you can somehow still yeah. pay, a, pay a bit for the ROM and then download it and... and um, yeah, so, you mentioned after getting the new forum up and going, yeah. and of course there's PRG right now that's occupying a truck, but 99.99% .99 of his time. Right. So that probably won't come super soon. Maybe I'm sure it'll be after PRG. If I, I think after, um, but it's uh, yeah. So things are are going to happen. I'm I'm pretty sure about uh, about that. Um, you may not know this answer, but I, I, I know filmmakers are asked this question all the time when they release their new film and they're at the film festivals, people come up to them, say, great, great film, what's your next film? Which... So, somebody asked, somebody asked, do, let's just say, do you have a next idea for a game? Um, and do you want to talk about it? And is it another port or not, or an original game? I'm, I'm actually... Because all, all three games have been ports so far. Right, right. And I remember when I was working on releasing Amoeba Jump, I already started working on Tower of Rubble. Same goes for uh, a Load Runner. Um, yeah. But basically at the moment, I'm not working on another game. So... Okay. I, I, yeah. Maybe some ideas, but not even uh, a single line of code. But um, <laughs> okay. yeah, just just in the uh, development phase right now, yeah. in the nebula of ideas. And oh, Ivory Tower Collections asked that one, and the the one before was asked by uh, Shrapnel Two. I want to just make sure I say their names. Sorry. Uh, uh, so uh, the next. Question, Master KSI, KSI, uh, almost the same question for Dino. Do you have the nerves to continue programming for the Atari 2600? So if you don't, even if you don't know what game you're going to make, are you in love with the 2600, or uh, are you open to other platforms? Um, I, I've been looking at other platforms, but I really love the 2600. For some strange reason, I, I keep coming <laughs> back to that system. Um, yeah. And that's it's what what I really like about this is is creating those those kernels to display all the lines on the screen. It's just yeah. fascinating, and it's that's really the fun of the uh, e even this game. You're, you're still limited to what the TIA can do, basically. Uh, even when when yeah. working on an ARM chip, you got some uh, you got no, a coprocessor basically, no, which can help you implement the uh, uh, the logic. But still, it yeah. has to be displayed on the screen by the TIA, and that's nothing you yeah. can do about that. Um, only so many clock cycles that right. you have to work with. The, the TIA is not giving you any more. Right. <laughs> but it's still loving that. So I probably my next game is going to be in 2600 the game again. Uh, okay. Because I love the system. Excellent. Um, Oh, Thrust also uh, uh, conferred, saying that uh, lawyers are always opposing downloads. That's my experience with uh, oh, regarding yeah. Boulder Dash, because, you know, they're re-releasing Boulder Dash, and they released it back in the day. And, uh, yeah, it's never been available for download beyond beyond demos. Yeah. So, yeah, it is difficult because there's the whole aspect of, oh, once it gets out, and then there's no... Everybody just shares it, and so right. I can see why they'd be scared, scared of it. And as opposed to a developer's own game where they're like, it's done, it's done its sales, now we'll release the the different release windows, let's say. And it happens with films as well. It goes into the theater, yeah. Yeah. then it goes um, on disc and then streaming, and then it goes for free on TV, etc., etc. Yeah. There's this gradual tail end of it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when it's somebody else's project, uh, IP, let's say, not project, IP, they have a they have a say and they have involvement in really yeah. and maybe also the to... reason is because the roms are really small like it is 32k yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's That's easy right. to copy can... to download whatever yeah yeah you can like print it out on a two-sided piece of paper in hexadecimal yeah <laughs> <laughs> right. Probably, sc yeah. just scan it in on a scanner and you've got the game right <laughs> Um, so we are out of questions. 
And Tanya is trying to play the third level I know, again. I'm Still trying difficult. To, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the timings down, but uh, it, is, it is a difficult one. It's very precise. <laughs> um, but I have it on high speed, so they're flying so. around. I really, I have to say, I really enjoy the high speed uh, mode. Um, yeah. <laughs> with the guards just flying around the screen, it's really fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the thing is, uh, when you're playing in high speed, you can get a higher score also. Um, oh, okay. Oh, the timer the time doesn't stays the same. Yeah. Ah, I like oh, that. that's a good challenge. So yeah. if somebody thinks they're really, really good and yeah. wants to get the high score, uh, it, and the scores are per level, right. so. Yeah. There, you're trying up for a high score on each level, mm -hmm. and I, and I guess a cumulative one at the same time. If you manually add them up, right. you can go. Okay, exactly. well, I got all these levels mm -hmm. here. It's like a speedrunner adding up the the times on each of their levels, mm -hmm. right? And then it adds up to a total time. Yeah. Yeah. Just just uh, only for for level one. Like I, I was trying to speedrun that. So putting it on the highest speed level mm -hmm. one. Right. I, I I think I got the most optimal way of scoring the points and ending the level. <laughs> uh, yeah, but right. I'm sure other people that. will find even uh, smarter ways of getting even more points. Yeah, because there's multiple paths you can take. There, yeah. You can outrun the guards, you can manipulate the guards, you can yeah. bury the guards. Yeah. So right. I can see a, a lot of optimization can go into uh, uh, point chasing. Right. If somebody wants to get the high score, yeah. So you should definitely post when. Oh, another question: When is the demo going to be released so people can try it out for themselves? Uh, right, right after this show. So. <laughs> oh, there you go, everyone. Okay, you yeah. should post your score on level one, what you got, so somebody, so people can try and uh, get a challenge right. to try and beat your score. Right. When you release the the demo version of it, mm. that'll be a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alifer asks, how many hours did the development of the game take oh, wow. you? If you can even estimate that. Yeah, yeah. That's, hey. And that's just development time, not not even like, I guess, you know, planning it out too. And then there's negotiations with Tozai and talking with the artist for the cover. And yeah. I mean, there's right. a lot that you could add up. So I, I think, okay, the, the starting from the idea to the actual release is like, what is it? Three years? <laughs> Which is yeah, long time. three, three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that was, I think most of the time was probably waiting on, on stuff to happen. And, uh, <laughs> yes. I wasn't yeah, busy there was for... A, quite a, quite a, a decent lag between when the beta testing ended and today when the demo right. comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say I, I probably spent developing it probably slightly less than a year, I think. Yeah. Um, total. And then that like you, full time job year, you mean? And then or no, no, not job year. <laughs> but I, I think that the time span of a year and then the evenings maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So still, it's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, Nostalgia gas. Did you focus on the C sixty four version as a model for your port, or did you look uh, at other other ports as well? Yeah. I mean I, all I, the. Yeah. I, I the, started the with the C64 uh, version, basically. That that's my okay. Uh, yeah. Where I looked at the animation and and the way the game played. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And and in the beginning, I wasn't even aware that there was like an Apple II version. <laughs> it came. <laughs> right. That came later. Yeah. And and do you know the differences between like the uh, Atari and the Apple and the C64? Like in terms of let's just say the level structure are those all exactly the same those are exactly level structure? yeah so on on these three systems okay. like the the apple 2 and the commodore 64 and the atari uh, 800 the levels are exactly the same the uh the, even the, the graphics is the same um okay there are some difference in in sounds the apple 2 has different sounds like uh and i know the the commodore yeah. 64 has a special sound where you finish a level you get like a little tune uh, oh, okay. That that's not in the Apple II version, so I kind of combined some things there. Um, okay. But uh, basically, I focused on on the 64 Commodore 64 uh, version, which is the the kind of the base version. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, Shrapnel says Doug Smith would have been proud of you. I'm pretty sure about that. So <laughs> is, oh, has Doug a... Smith passed pa passed on, or d is he still around? No, you know? no, he, I didn't. Uh, yeah. So he passed on, um, I'm not sure when, 
like six yeah. years ago or something like that. Not not even. Mm -hmm. that oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm that sure he would be very uh, very happy to impressed. see this version yeah. <laughs> and impressed. Yeah. Especially uh, if he knew the limitations of the twenty six hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Would would be kind of cool if we would would be able to see it, but uh, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Uh, so is there anything else you'd like to add before we uh, let you go? Yeah, ba basically uh, the, the only thing I want to add is, is thanks to all the beta testers also that helped me create the game to uh, uh, Albert from Atari H for, for basically doing all the negotiations also with Tozai uh, that really helped mm -hmm. um, uh, David Exxon for the, the designs and, and you guys for playing this game and playing in on, <laughs> oh, an, thank you. on a Saturday, <laughs> on a suitable time <laughs> well, for it's, me. It's, yeah, oh, no problem. We wanted to make sure, watch that cat, Yeah. I'm so that uh, you could be, if you'd be able to come on and have a comfortable amount of time to, to talk about the game. Mm. And and thank you for including us in the beta testing. Oh, yeah, It was yeah. a yeah. ton of fun. So much fun to play. Playing through all the levels and trying to figure, it, figure them all out. Psst. Oh, that cat, bad this cat. cat is, is, is chewing cords <laughs> around the laptop here, so uh, you she... seem a, a touch distracted. It's trying to stop it. And Shrapnel from... says congratulations yeah. and thank you for your incredible effort. Yes. He's still chewing them. I know. Get away. Get, get, get. Go, go, <laughs> Sorry, go. bad cats. Sorry. Cats are hungry for technology. Yeah. <laughs> He's coming back. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on the show once again. And we're really looking forward to uh, seeing you again at uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo yeah. and talking with you a little bit more about the game mm -hmm. cool. uh, as you, you know, hold up the box. Yeah. <laughs> have it in your hand because I'm sure you haven't uh, you haven't held a, a copy of the box no, of the cartridge no, no, yet. No, no, I'm really yeah. excited. So that's really that. exciting. And, uh, yeah, of course, I, I, I hope you can make it also and then we can meet at the, uh, yeah. the Retro uh, yes. uh, Expo. It would be really, yeah. Yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah, we're definitely we're definitely going to be there, and I yeah. know a lot of other developers are going to be there. A lot of people, like are a ton. I have yeah. a lot of uh, interviews to to do there, That's so it'll be exciting. it'll be a lot of fun. Especially after it hasn't happened in three years, yeah. right? So uh, yeah, it's very very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, great show. Not only is the great game great, but the person behind it is a great <laughs> person. <laughs> Master KSI says yes. <laughs> Dion is awesome. Yeah. yeah, you guys should. Uh, if you see him at PRG, just say go hi. up and say hi. Yeah. To him. He's, he's really great to talk to. Yeah. No treat time today. We'll do it after we let go of uh, uh, yeah. Dion, so we don't Didn't interrupt. Didn't want to interrupt the. Yeah, the... thank you everyone for not yeah. interrupting the the, mm -hmm. the interview for that. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Dion. Thank it's you. been a pleasure again okay. talking with you and demoing your game. Getting to it play. Is, yeah. It is beautiful, <laughs> and yeah. like like before, I can't ima I can't. Imagine this game ever coming to the 2600. It seemed like one of those impossible games because mm. it's so complex, but you did it. Yeah. It's great. Really looking forward to, to the moment that people can buy this game and play it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. going to be special. Like watching other people play your game at Portland Retro Gaming right. Expo. I know a lot of people are going to pass by it and go, what? What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 2600 and load runner? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> and they're going to play it and be astounded. Yeah. yeah. So cool. that's going to that's going to be a lot of fun. Um so thank you yeah. for thank you. Uh, being here and we'll talk with you soon. See you Dion. soon. Yep, you bet. See you at PRG. Very bye bye. Soon. Bye. bye bye. That was awesome to talk with Dion and to play the first couple levels of his new game. Load Runner officially <coughs> put me. out by Tozai and distributed by Atari Age. It'll be at Portland Retro Gaming Expo for you to buy mm -hmm. and take home and play. Mm -hmm. That's going to be so much fun just to see the reactions to people. <laughs> um, there's going to be so many amazing games at the Atari Age booth this year yeah. that are going to be like blowing away people like what what is this yeah yeah so so many um and this is our last show before portland yeah, it is Expo. it is we're not doing one on uh tuesday oh god that's the day before we leave no, i know I no i just wasn't sure i wasn't no. sure yep yep yeah i have a lot to schedule prepare. so um, yep, including contacting fair. a lot of developers that's and fair. getting ready getting my equipment ready to yep. take down um yep. 
yeah, it was wonderful to play. I apologize to all the people <laughs> yelling at me in the chat. She's not I, listening to when, us. When ah. we're do, when we're uh, when we're chatting, uh, when we have Skype on the laptop, I don't have the chat in front of me. Yeah. So I we have a tiny tablet over here, and I have to lean over and try and see what people are saying. Yeah. Um, but to answer a few questions that I saw after the fact, you can't dig on level three at all. Oh, so it's that's all solid. You cannot dig at all. Oh, okay. And uh, in order to move left or right when you're falling, you have to hit the head of the guard, which is why Hard you timing. can't just move over. You have to time it so you hit the head of the guard can, can so you, you can move to the right. Can you kind of fall early and then use gravity to hit So him? if you notice, when I mistime it and I'm falling, yeah. I will go... <clears throat> Uh, uh, which is me hitting the head of the guard as I get to the bottom. So every time you hit, you can't go left or right. Okay. But as you're falling, you can't go but left But only or right. as you hit. Only as you hit. And so you can't it's move all when you're falling, can you? in perfecting the timing of hitting the head of the guard while you can move <clears throat> to the right and get on the ladder or to the left. Well, I'll miss you but, too, Nostalgic. It's yeah. going to be uh, a couple weeks yeah. before we get back and streaming again but we've got lots of awesome games lined up yeah we'll try and do some basic streaming not the interviews but just kind of us wandering around or something really quick and simple nothing set up because we don't have we're not bringing a lot of equipment with not us. a lot we're going to try yeah. to pare it down as much yeah. as possible <laughs> yeah um but we'll be recording a lot of interviews there which we'll be posting on youtube yeah afterwards yeah so watch for yeah. those um Anyone want to treat the cats? Is that turned on? It's time to treat the cats. Yeah, is it on? Is this? Yeah, is the... it's ready to go. It's if working. If anyone this has year, extra bits, this, now this would be episode. the time yep. to make them go crazy. So, yeah, you can treat them. They've been waiting patiently. Yeah. I always like to see their reaction. Yeah. Um. So let's. Atari's been trying to chew all the electrical cords while we've been playing. I'll put it into the cat cam mode. Yeah. If anybody wants to. <laughs> not available. Right See? It says it's not available. That doesn't make any sense. If it's not, we'll just treat them anyway. That's bizarre. What is wrong with that um, software? You've had Let's a see. lot of trouble with it lately. It says it is. It says it's there. Let me try it myself. Out of stock? Is that what it says for everyone? What? Out of stock. <laughs> I what? ran out of catnip. Okay, cat well, my cat treats are upstairs. I'm just going to get them. Okay. Because well, it, it is just cruel not to get them. <laughs> How could it be out of stock? I know Twitch has been changing a bunch of stuff. Uh, changing it around and adding things in. But we, we're not out of stock here. So <laughs> that's really weird. Uh, let me just redo. Let me reboot the program that allows the cat treats. One second. Yeah, out of stock. It's so silly. Okay, let's reboot that. Try it again. Yeah, I did hear about the YouTube testing some 4K videos behind the premium paywall. Like, it's to watch them in 4K. You can watch them in 1080p, right? I'm thinking you have to buy catnip from Twitch. <laughs> A special Twitch catnip. Yeah. Okay, I'm rebooting the program. That You're going to allows... see if you can get it to work first. Yeah. Wait, of course, wait they've second. seen me take down the bells. So oh, now they're going crazy anyway. Yeah, they are going crazy. Uh, okay, I've rebooted the program. I don't know if I can redeem it. Still says out of stock. Out of stock. Weird. Okay. I'll have that's to okay. manually look at it. We will, we will uh, give them a free treat time. There you yeah. go, kitties. Nobody needs to spend their bits on it right Aww. now. But you've, there have been, oh. <laughs> I think that was Atari and then. And Atari got it first. Yeah. Good Atari. But he rang it after. There you go. There's one for you. You silly cats. Very silly. Yeah. Um, so let's see what's coming up. Uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo, of course, is coming this Friday. Not this Friday. Today is Saturday. Next Friday. Oh, boy. Um, and we have a meetup there for anybody who is going to be at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It is at Ground Control. <coughs> it's at Ground Control on Ground Control? Saturday night, 8 p.m. to midnight. Good kitty. <laughs> he listened to you. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. No, but he didn't hit hard hard enough. So. Um, but after that, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Um, let's see, Coleco Vision Day. And now that I have the controller, I just need the Super Games module, which is on its way. Uh, we're going to be playing Moon Cresta. Donkey Kong, um, possibly the premiere of Mooncrest on the ColecoVision. 
Uh, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man DX, and Gradius as well. Hit the bell, Kevin. Um, Hit it, Atari. Guess I'll re render everything for 1440p. Yeah, 1440p is still pretty good. Um, we have the exclusive uh, world premiere of Pantheon 2, which was just sent to me the other day. Mm. Uh, remember the uh, the Greek god games? I do remember that. Um, also the superhero game. He's back with a new one. Oh. Oh, yes, Pantheon yes, yes. Two. Where you got to pick your superhero, and yep. the, the that was really, really interesting. I really yep. like that one. Yeah, it was very, very interesting. We've got a Halloween homebrew special. We might have to extend it into Atari 8-bit games this year. Yeah. Because I think we pl played every single um, homebrew that is remotely scary and yeah. original game. Well, we can we can games. do our best of possibly. We could. We could. Just pull up. Come on, you got to hit it hard. Um and we have the Snag ABBUC it. 2022 entries. That's probably going to be two shows. There's a lot of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ding ding ding. And <laughs> Then we have Atari Age Day 2022 Fall Edition. That's going to be sometime in November, approximately. It's going to coincide with the release of the new games. We're going to be talking with all the developers, Excellent. which is a ton of them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ding, ding. He's so persistent about he is, it. He loves his treats. Ding, ding. <laughs> it's not with one ring. Yeah. Ding, ding. Just so you can hear it. Good. Atari's like, Atari, one more. Ding. Who gets the, the last one? I have a suspicion it will be little spring. There you yeah, go. Good it's good to take them away while they're both eating, so it's not like <coughs> they're diving for it Excuse or something. Me. Sorry, I've, I've had a mild cold that has been annoying me and yeah, running so, out of the room. So. Every Tower Collection oh. says we might be able to go, assuming we can catch a ride. Uh, I guess that's talking about the meetup. Yeah. Um, I've also uh, posted it. There's a direct tram ride there for three dollars. Yeah. Yeah. From the convention, there it it's goes just directly. across the road from the convention center. Yeah. There's a tram ride. Yeah. Above ground rail. I don't know which one is light. <laughs> light rail. Yeah. Um, and, and that's goes, and that's likely what we'll take because yeah, it's so much easier. It, I don't and then park. finding parking and all that. It'll cost less yeah. than parking probably. Yeah. Um, and it drops off right in front of ground control, yeah. so it is the easiest thing. Very possible. convenient, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you are staying around that the convention center, it's, it's quite That's an easy way to yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. And and there is also um, <coughs> you can uh, order rides up, like taxis or oh, you know, or like a, a quick Uber across. Uber, it's not far left, at least. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we're staying at the new Hyatt. Oh yeah. Oh, where's that? Is that nearby? I don't know. I, I, I don't assume know. it's near. New there's Hyatt. a there's a number of. Right, obviously uh, near the uh, convention center. Yeah. It, it makes sense to have a bunch of hotels. So there's yeah. a number of them there across, across the street. street. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it's good. Yeah. They're at the new Hyatt. We'll have to get everyone's uh, take on their hotels. We've stayed at a number <laughs> yes. since since we go and visit, but uh, yeah, we've switched from. They're all fine, so we just we, ended we, up at the one one that's pretty nearby and and very inexpensive because yeah. the the I mean the inflation inflation is bad, but the conversion. Psst. Now you're learning from Atari. Yeah. The Sprite is learning bad habits. Yeah, inflation and inflation conversion. Inflation is bad, but the conversion's really bad it's for 1. us right, right now. It's 1.3 right now, so it's like, uh, yeah, kind of sucks. So all of it together, yeah. So anyway. we're going to be back on, I have the 18th down here, which, you know, is a week and a half. So it's not that long, mm. yeah. So we'll only be off for a week and a half. Only miss like three shows, and and we'll be posting things. Right? Yeah, we'll be posting um, the interviews. Yeah, so there'll be there'll be content. Yeah. It just won't be the the regular. And I'm gonna make it so I can I can tr yeah. turn them out pretty quickly. Are you gonna try and do a few live streams off the phone or? Yeah, just some simple. They'd be very stuff. basic though. Yeah. Very short. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. There's not gonna be any overlays because it's on a phone. Yeah. Uh, I I'm gonna look into see if you can do one overlay and just put zero page on it to make it easy but yeah yeah we'll just do a simple phone one yeah you know to do a quick tour of the atari age booth or yeah, something that'd like be that fun. Yeah. yeah yeah we'll find a few things to do yeah. over there yeah um i think that's it for now thank you so much for tuning in yeah. i always love talking with developers yeah on the chat and talking about their new games i love hearing the we inspiration did it twice in a row which is crazy for why people pick the games they pick um, yes. You know, because a, a lot of nostalgia, but like affinity for certain games and yeah, why the they want to convert behind it. Them. Yeah, I love hearing that. Yeah, and the, um, the um, what sparked it. Yeah. Like, how, how did you think that this was able to be made on the yeah. 2600? Yeah. 
Videos of people playing the games are always cool for developers. And it's always fun for yes. us to play them. <laughs> it is so. always fun to play them, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, thank you for watching. Yes. Nostalgic and Ivory Tower Collections. Yeah. And Thrust, Dan ABC, Shrapnel, uh, <laughs> Al Nefer, Old School nice. 70, Dianoid, of course, mm -hmm. uh, for being on the show. Always welcome to come on the show. Um, Carl G. Master KSI or Casey? Casey. Casey, Casey I think. Probably. Uh, Dios Kilos 80. Um, Rendered Ghost. Uh, Tom 182. Looking for names. Yorgi's Castle. Nice. It's a shame because. Spicewear. Uh, couldn't read the chat through most of that. No. So, yeah. I'm just looking for quick PG. questions. Yep, Packer VG. Tom, Tom 182. And thank you to Azizon89 and Iatech ABI for following during yes. the show. Sorry, I couldn't interrupt while we we're doing yeah. the show. Um, we definitely will have fun at PRGE. It oh, is one of the time. biggest shows in the world and definitely yeah. the biggest in North America. Yeah. So if you haven't been and you're not going this year, definitely go next year because yeah. it's really awesome if you can i mean it's a it's, it's a distance if you're on the east coast and places like yep, that but, or overseas um, or well that's a whole different thing yeah yeah, yeah. but, but it, uh, it's a destination for people like yeah. us <laughs> yeah. that's for sure yeah. just the impressiveness of the atari age booth is oh it's amazing crazy yeah so combine it with some other things like yeah. it's in portland go down to california yeah look at other things while you're far. there if you're coming overseas yeah oh that'd be great to see you next year spicewear that's that's awesome yeah it's too bad you're not able to make it this year mm -hmm. um yeah that's it so we're done for yeah. today yeah um looking forward to our mini vacation in yeah. portland yeah um and uh looking forward to coming back and catching up on a bunch of games that we haven't been able to play because we've had a bunch of very special debuts and interviews and stuff mm -hmm. um so there's a big backlog of games which is awesome <laughs> yeah you want to build it up so you have a lot to show right yes. so yeah, yeah that's good stuff yep. uh to all the canadians out there happy thanksgiving it's thanksgiving oh. day on monday oh yes that's right yep. happy thanksgiving yeah you forgot but <laughs> yeah i keep forgetting yeah. i never forget food going over to our, my um, sisters yeah yeah that's right yeah so looking forward to that and yes. uh happy thanksgiving to all the canadians and that's right. <laughs> uh looking forward to seeing the people who come to yes. portland next yes week. there's a so, big list going to i'm very excited that for that i i it's recognize nice. from the show yeah. and in the forums and uh, looking forward to meeting you at yeah. the arcade as well yes yeah and hanging out having yeah. drinks yeah how funny it is columbus native american day in, in the, the US. us yeah oh is it on the monday is it columbus day yeah oh, okay yeah we copy each other's days because to sync them There's up a, a bit, I think. There's kind of a weird syncing up of, of some of the like, days off. Well, not all of them, though. It's easier if we just but, both uh, have a holiday at the same time. But they're not always at the same time. No, it's no, like, no. Um, what's, is it Memorial Day or not Memorial Day? Mother's Day is different, which freaks the hell out of me each what? year. Is it? Yes. Um, it's either Britain has it earlier or U.S. Oh, has it I earlier. Think we have it the and same I go, as oh my God, today's Mother's Day. Yeah. And then it's like, oh no, it's British Mother's Day. Or something <laughs> like that. It freaks the hell out of me yeah. every year. But we have Victoria Day in May, and then the, I think there's another either holiday in April or May in the States. But it's like things are slightly off sometimes, but uh, mm. yeah, officially Columbus Day, but Native American Day. I would also probably lead That's towards Native probably American probably going to be more and more the yeah. way it's referred to as it goes yeah. on. Yeah, Canada Day and Independence Day are three days apart. Yep, yeah, first and if fourth. If you get really lucky, it's you'll the have... Friday and Monday. It's the Friday and Monday, and then you can like Super hang weekend. out in Canada... And on the Friday, party in the US and then on the go fourth. party in the U.S. on the Monday. So yeah, if it really lines up, I yeah, and it does sometimes, yeah. some years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're done. Yeah, I think. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see all you guys soon, and, and um, have a back great to weekend. streaming in a couple of weeks. But uh, watch out for other stuff. Yep. Yeah. You bet. Okay. See you uh, at PRGE, and then after that. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thank bye -bye. you, Dinoid. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Dinoid. <laughs>